Thanks for staying with us. In the past, information was primarily shared through traditional media like the newspapers, radio and television. But in today's digital age, information can be instantly disseminated through the internet and social media platforms, which has led to the rapid spread of fake news without proper fact checking. Artificial intelligence is now being utilized to combat this issue by employing advanced algorithms to verify the credibility of news sources and improve the reliability of information. And these AI techniques are also designed to detect manipulated media content, thereby reducing the spread of false narratives and maintaining digital authenticity. Well, we have joining us now Abidin Olashupo. He's the CEO of My AI Fact Checker. He joins us via Zoom uh, to tell, uh, tell us about uh, this intervention, uh, talking about My AI Fact Checker. Abidin, thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. All right, before we go into the workings of um, this offering uh, from your end, talking about my AI fact checker. Tell us about uh, the motivation for you, uh, what you saw, the need you saw on ground uh, to come up with this solution. Thank you very much for the privilege, and I sincerely appreciate the platform and the great work you're doing at the TVC Breakfast Show. So, coming up with this solution comes stems on from personal story. As an individual, I was a part of the Naughty Young Children movement, and specifically, I coordinated the Naughty Young Children campaign in Kwara State. So during the campaign, a whole lot of people who, who are having another motive tried to malign my personality, tried to you know blackmail me, spread fake news about my personality, to talk about the fact that I was working with the Senate pres the then Senate president, to install his sons in power. So, you know, different news started for. for flying around which are ordinarily not genuine. So I was of the opinion that, you know, news like this that spread around not just about politics, not a job, uh, just about business, but about something I am passionate about, which is young people inclusion in politics. A whole lot of people will be affected. So precisely at our organization, Brain Builders Youth Development Initiative, at the core of our work is that we use data, research and technology to, you know, carry out advocacy campaign and interventions of our projects. Precisely five years ago, we did a research into the reason why people have not been participating in elections. So from our research, which we had more than 30,000 respondents for across the 36 states of the Federation, we discovered three things. One, issues around misinformation and disinformation in the election contributes in no small measure to the reason why people are not participating in elections. Two, election violence pre, during, and post-election. And three, trust of the electoral empire. So as an organization that is, you know, having technology at the core of what we do, so we, we plan to launch three solutions, tech-driven solutions. That was why we launched what we call the Election Violence Incident Tracker that spots, you know, different zones based on the information from previous elections. Then we launch what we call Why Votes Niger as well, too, through storytelling and infographics to encourage people to participate in civic engagement. Because we are of the opinion that if democracy is all about inclusion and participation, then majority of Gen Z or majority of young people from the population should be a part of the decision-making process. And the last one, which was misinformation and disinformation. And any opportunity that I've got you know, to talk about this, I tell people, misinformation or disinformation is another pandemic where it will happen. God forbid, you know, we've had the COVID you know, that affected a whole lot of things. So another thing that we are, I tell people, we are sitting on the king of gunpowder if we are not treating issues around misinformation and disinformation. So that was how we started Fact Check Africa about three years ago. So our aim at Fact Check Africa is to democratize access to genuine information to the last minute Nigeria. What I mean by that is even Nigerians who are the grassroots community who ordinarily do not have access to internet must be able to deceive the fact from fiction and as well uh, discover what is true from what is not true. So that was why we started for Czech Africa three years ago, um, an organization that is at the arm of the Brain Builders Development Initiative, where we have trained an army of fact checkers. I tell people, we are creating an army of fact checkers who will, you know, democratize access to, having access to genuine information. We have trained students across different campuses in Nigeria. And just as we studying last year, while we are having our brainstorming session with colleagues and management team, we discovered the time that it takes us to fact check an information. And we are also weary because as a fact-checking organization, we don't want a situation where we are still going to be the ones to be 
you know, disseminating fake news. So fact-checking process it takes a whole lot of rigorous exercises. But for example, now maybe a news just broke out and we need to call a person to call a person to confirm. Then it gives a whole lot of challenges, a whole lot of barrier. For example, start looking for contacts, trying to you know get the facts right so that when our report is going out as well, we know that we are churning out what is really the fact. So a lot of challenges. And Fatcheck Africa has limited resources. We only have less than 20 staff who work with us at the moment. So for us to be able to do this effectively, we started researching on how artificial intelligence could assist us in doing this work further and better and in near real time. So that was just an overview of how we got started from my own personal story to research around why people are not participating in election to starting for check Africa and EFVIT and why Vote Nigeria was as specific tech tools now to see how we as a management who are trying to brainstorm about um, a year plus ago to see how artificial intelligence could, you know, assist us in what we are doing and make ours get results faster. Interesting stuff. Um, but the thing is, uh, there is this maxim that facts are sacred, comments are free. And then it depends on what you say and what people hear, if it actually meets their own expectations. I definitely, I, I don't know how they would want to change their mind when, when they are confronted with what is the actual, you know, what is the truth. So uh, talk to us about this, my AI fact checker, which you, you know, you, you already made mention about, and then the, the, you already told us the inspiration behind it, but how much would you describe the, the, the platform and the vision, how it has evolved since its inception in tackling, you know, fake news and misinformation? Thank you very much. And, you know, it's exciting to see a platform like TVC as well open to conversation like this. This wasn't the normal with, um, you know, discussing platforms and, um, you know, collaborative tools like this that could help not only journalists, but everyday users in Nigeria. So it's something that I need to give TVC the flowers for. Thank you for the opportunity once again. My AI Fachaka has a platform which is web platform for now. It is not a mobile app. And one of the reasons why we did that was we know a whole lot of people, when we talk about um, you know, digital divide in Nigeria, or even the level of digital literacy in Nigeria, while we are not currently doing that, I think there is a whole lot of you know, gap that we need to fill. So my grandpa and my grandma in the village, who ordinarily might not have access to internet, there is an harm of my AI Facheka, which has to do with grassroots reorientation that we have done. We have visited more than 50 communities, as I speak with you today, and touching nothing less than over 10,000 lives directly and indirectly through our local partners across different communities. We are of the belief that for us to counter fake news sustainably, then, and how many of the older generation, I don't know, if you are one of the listeners or viewers today, maybe during COVID-19, if you are lucky that your grandpa or your grandma from village do not send you a text message that you should bath with salt and water, maybe, well, I can say you are lucky. But it's one of the misinformation that, you know, generated via WhatsApp platform, especially during COVID-19, yeah. which also shows that, you know, the older generation should not be left behind. And that's why an harm of Fat Check Africa is reaching to grassroots. Another harm of Fat Check Africa believes so much in the capacity of the youth. We believe in the youth power. And that's why we are training aspiring journalists across tertiary institutions. Over the last year, we have reached out to more than 30,000 students across over seven to eight campuses in the six geopolitical zones of the country, making them the ambassador for this. Because we also discover Nigeria, according to the numbers they are churning out, apologies, we are over 200 million population. So it's practically impossible for, you know, just a solution to get across to all. So we built my AI for checker with the mind that we don't just want to build for the Nigerian audience. We don't just want to build for the African audience. We want to build generally for audience from across anywhere in the world. So that's why, if you look at our platform at the moment, it has been translated to AUSA, Yoruba, and Igbo. So that, of course, if you are not lettered or if you could not fact check in English, you want to fact check in your own local language, mm -hmm. it gives you an opportunity to do that. Not only that as well, it was translated into three major languages across Africa, which is uh, the Swahili, highly spoken in Africa, Arabic, and French. And at the moment, we are working on German and Portuguese as well to integrate different local languages and tick the box of localization. Why my AI for Cheka is distinct is this. We are using advanced Google search API. We are using MetaLama 3, 
we are using GPT-4, and as well crowdsourcing, you know, different credible sources, special thanks to our, our team of developers and data miners that have curated, because of course, the next question I expect will be coming is, AI is feeding on data, what if the data available is not genuine, what if the data available cannot give you an accurate information, so that citizens will not be fact-checking the fact-checker, because that's the next hashtag now. Yeah. We have curated, you know, we have mined a whole lot of data that will give you an accurate information. And at my AI fact checker, what we do not have available, for example, if you're asking me who's going to win the president of America, if you're asking my AI fact checker who's going to win the president of the United States of America, that is happening very soon, my AI fact checker is not able to predict at the moment. What my AI fact checker will be able to do for you is to crowdsource, you know, some poll and tell you that according to this poll or X, Y, Z, this is what citizens are saying. But, you know, sometimes, you know, online polls are also translate to who win elections in Nigeria, in, in, across even the world. So my AI fact checker also has what we call a sentiment analysis to tell you if the sentiment of what you are looking for is positive or negative. And why is this my AI fact checker extremely awesome? In less than 20 seconds... Maximum 17, 16 seconds, you have fact-check any information. You have typed anything. And it's not just restricted to Nigerian. Though this is built by a Nigerian, this is built by African, but it's been used across the world. I just came back from Canada yesterday. We are at presentation at the One Young World Summit about my AI fact-checker and was tested by thousands of delegates. That's to tell us that, you know, Africa is not trying to play catch-up as far as technology is concerned. Thousands, hundreds right. of, you know, mm -hmm. of users... Right. Okay. Um, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was still on that okay. point because you've said that this is not an app. And um, of course, uh, you are limited in numbers and so the need to train as many people as possible so that even when your team isn't there, uh, they can be able to, um, you know, use this, um, this, this, program, so to speak. But tell us some more about how uh, people at the grassroots area, people, how these people, how accessible uh, is my AI fact checker? Thank you very much. That was what I was talking about the other time, that we are ex exceptionally different because we want to make sure that people at the grassroots community have access to this platform. And for people living with disability as well, who are, may have one difficulty or the other typing, there's also a voice to text on my AI fact checker platform as well which just gives you opportunity to just send maybe a voice note, translate it into what you want to fact check and get the information in your real time. Besides the web platform as well, we also have an interactive chat box that you could type into and get responses. And that's why as well, it has been translated into local languages. So what we are moving on to now is to, you know, this USSD code and as well create a, a, a WhatsApp chatbot like the meta WhatsApp chatbot that people have access to, to ask my AI fact checker questions as well. So for grassroots community, while we have tried to train them on the offline methodology, we have been training them on online methodology as well for those who have Android phone. But the next question we should ask ourselves is, you know, not everybody who lives at the grassroots community could afford an Android phone. And that's why, mm -hmm. you know, we are trying to also look for ways to which USA, um, um, the fact checking platform could be USSD power in such a way that even if you have access to just this phone, this type of phone, we are pressing um, with a particular code on your phone, you are able to fact check that information. We are also partnering with, you know, radio a platform, as we also discovered from our research that a whole lot of people in the grassroots community have access to listening to radios as well. So that when we fact check some of this information that are going viral as well, partnering with radio stations to, you know, disseminate that information is going a whole long way. So from what we have been able to do over the last years, we have discovered that people in the grassroots community are interested in intervention and innovation like this. The major challenge is the fact that they were scared of technology. And that's why we have also tried to, um, you know, storify and correct that insinuations about the fact that technology is not just here for, uh, to do them bad. Technology is here for them to uh, leverage on it for good. And a case in point is the fact that a whole lot of fintech platforms are using mobile money now in Nigeria. Yeah. So if mobile money could work as well, so we are also leveraging uh, as collaboration in a collaboration with a, a team of experts, and developers, and data miners as well to see which to which grassroots community could interesting project, stuff um, using the code at the moment. Right, interesting stuff. Uh, but then um, I, I'm wondering how the my AI fact checker would definitely help the suppose in the newsroom because we are constantly being faced with you know struggling against you know disinformation uh, it, um, uh, fake news and all of that and you know, always trying to fact check 
most of the information coming out, even from politicians, or just some things we, we get to see. Because as against, as against gatekeeping, we also do some sort of, you know, gate watching what is being reported in other places and how we can, you know, definitely arrive at what is, you know, the, the, at our own level best in informing Nigeria. But we are also victims ourselves. You know, my colleague here, Kemi, myself, uh, every other person on this platform had been victims of, you know, um, uh, you know, using our own picture and then using our yeah. own video and then we are, we are selling some products that we don't even have any information about. So how yeah. are you helping those of us in the media, in the newsroom and the consumer, the audience, who are the final consumers of, you know, the information that brings up? Because they are using us because they know that it's a credible platform. So how do you help yeah. us? Thank you so much for that brilliant question. Just about two months ago, we just completed what I call the first AI Journalism Fellowship in West Africa, where he would train nothing less than 41 newsrooms, journalists, technologies, and academicia on how they could integrate AI into their workers. Believe you me, to be honest, either we like it or not, AI has come to stay. So it's now over on us as individual, as corporate organization, to see ways through which we could integrate this into our working. And I do not believe in those who through hope the words that AI is going to take our job. No matter what as well, we still need a human face to some of these things. Mm -hmm. So a major part of what we train, because of course that fellowship ran for more than three months, what we train and we invited experts both within Africa and outside Africa that, you know, um, have got experiences in using AI for in, in newsrooms and in journalism. And of course, we have the hallucination as well. We have the bias associated with AI. I will, I will be economical with the truth as well, if I'm not talking about a little bit of challenges as well associated with AI. That's, that's right. Our own organization, alongside others, are also trying to work. Should we talk about the ethics? Should we talk about the regulation? Should we talk about the framework? So those challenges are there as well. But we acknowledge that. There is nothing that can come like, there is no any intervention or invention that will come that if you critically analyze, we not have positivity or negativity. So I was coming down from the fact that our organization also championed the first AI journalism fellowship in the whole of West Africa, where he, I, I said the other time that we trained up, but we won newsrooms, um, um, journalists, researchers, and academicians on ways through which they could integrate AI. I'm so sorry as well. I'm well aware of the fact that you know a whole lot of bad actors are leveraging on the popularity of people like yourself and others as well to maybe create a deep fake video to convince or lure their audience that you have not been doing anything. I'm also excited to tell you that a part of our latest version that will be coming out any moment from now, we'll be able to check video and images. Thanks to Google, thanks to Microsoft, and in recent times, thanks for the universities that has been our partner in this as well. Because if I tell you we can do it alone, it is a lie. So we were a part of the Google for Startup AI Accelerator in you know, recent time, and which gives us opportunity to assess a whole lot of resources from Google platform itself. Not only that as well, what we train people, where we go for training, basic things that we tell people as citizens or as journalists. The first thing you do when you see any image is to put it on Google reverse image. It tells you exactly where that image is has been used before, how it was used, so that even you as a journalist or as an influencer as well will not fall in the fake team. And we are currently working on naming and shaming as well, because we also discovered that a whole lot of influencers intentionally, especially during campaign, spread fake news. So we are trying to create what we call a hall of shame, where we continue to name and shame people. Maybe when, you know, embassies start denying people visas, when people start losing jobs just for creating, um, you know, fake news, or just for intentionally willing to misinform or disinform people, maybe this generation or the generations coming will take the spread of fake news serious. So at the moment, we have been working with newsroom to train journalists on how they could integrate AI into their work. Why also giving them a carpet? That's... Why using AI ensure you have it? For example, if I'm asking ChatGPT or um, or my AI fact checker um, um, to curate a content for me that I want to make a presentation on TBC live show, I will be so foolish and dumb to start reading what exactly AI is giving me. And I tell people, if you have played with AI very well, there are some words associated with AI that you are going to get used to it. Definitely. AI has some big, big grammars. It has a way through which, you know, it has an analogy of how it arranges its content. So if you are a journalist and you are watching this show this morning, what I'm, um, um, I'm encouraging you to use AI as well, I'm also encouraging you to critically, you know, after using the AI as well, do edit and add human angle to the story that you want to push. 
so that of course you won't just look foolish before your audience or look dumb as well. You know, like I've I actually, said, AI has come to stay. We have been partnering with news organizations and we we'll continue to do that as well to train much more journalists who, 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 who could be a beneficiary of this solution. I've actually listened to a comment, you know, uh, to a broadcast, you know, from one of the um, you know, politicians. Let me just mention the state. I do, you know, who read a complete speech and I saw that it was, you know, completely written by AI. You know, when you start hearing words like, now, like testaments and... You <laughs> have, bro. That's it. So I tell people, when you play with GPT or right. any of this AI solution very well, there's no way, no matter how smart you are, if you use AI for me, I will just look at it and say, man, you've just used this solution because there are some big grammars that cheated with that's just it. And there's the way, after you have used it, it systemizes what exactly you have said. So I'm happy that you could note that you could notice that as well. Awesome. Right, but you know, as we wind down on this conversation, uh, another reality to the trend now of news is that it's not just uh, the journalists that are reporting news. We even have much more, um, you know, Nigerians on the other side who call themselves newsmakers who call themselves uh, on <laughs> online journalists so, so so my question is that yes we now have ai as a solution to authenticate news but um how does it you know change our consciousness that before you even run with that story your first thought uh, you know whether you're a journalist or just a citizen your first thought should be to confirm that the story is real uh, because we saw how it how the evils of um, you know fake news how it pervaded the country during NSAS, the NSAS protests. Uh, but so how do we move forward? That you know the first thought that should come to your mind before sharing that big story is to check that it's it's genuine. Thank you very much as well. I quite understand your sentiments and I agree with you. While of course we continue to encourage you know our brothers and sisters who are investing in the online news media, I think it might be important, sincerely. Experience cannot be bought at the market, and that is a testament to the way, you know, you and your colleague have also been moderating this session since we we started. It shows you have been trained. So, sincerely, I would advise those who are going into the business of online journalism as well, even if it's just a diplomatic degree to start with, if you, or you have not access, you know, maybe an undergraduate degree or a postgraduate degree at the moment, Knowledge about ethics of journalism is important, to be honest. It's, a ball, it's an entirely new ball game. And um, if you, know, you have that knowledge, you are trained, you are an expert in that field as well, and you still intentionally want to misinform or disinform your audience, that's your own personal bias. And that's, uh, unfortunately, how organization or individual like myself cannot help it. But a major challenge that I've seen in the field, because of course, I work with this online news platform as well. That, that urgency to be the one to break that news it's a crazy thing that is happening to us in the in, in this part of the world. Like you want your platform to be the first to break the news without you know doing like a two-factor authentication. That's what I call it. Like, did you even check if that news is genuine as well yourself? Did you make an effort to see if that press statement that was sent to you, the data content? I know this is a whole lot of work. Maybe the data that has been churned out in the press statement that was shared with you is genuine as well. But you know, they lose credibility. That's, that's it. There are a whole lot of platforms that has been blacklisted by not only me, by a whole lot of colleagues as well, when we are having conversation, that I ask them. Right. Not just because of anything. I'm not going to mention the name of any brand. Not just because of anything, but because they are choosing to continue to spread misinformation intentionally. Mm -hmm. So what we are also trying to do as well is to, you know, critically look at the minds of Nigerians and, and, you know, use storytelling to convince people. Because fake news travel far, 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 far better than any fact check information. That's the reality. Right. If we later fact check as well, it might not be able to reach out to millions. So what we do sometimes is that platform where we turn the fake news, especially if it's on any of these social media platforms, is exactly where we try to, you know, counter it with the genuine information, maybe by quoting the tweet or replying the tweet as well. And thanks to organizations right. like Meta as well, we partner with them during elections. They were able to br bring down some, you know, fake news on their, on their platforms. That's right. why... When conversations around misinformation and disinformation is happening, aside partnering with organizations like TVC and the radio as well, there's a need to partner with tech giants as well right. to maybe delete the account of those who spread fake news, bring down the account of blacklist them as well. All right. Abidin uh, that, Ola that will be all for now. Of course, it's an ongoing conversation and we look forward to more engagement uh, with you. Thanks a lot for speaking to us Thank about so my AI fact checker. Hmm. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot. And we wish you best of luck with uh, that. All right. Still ahead on.